Hello guys, here's a new Blender hard surface sculpting tutorial in which I want to show you how to add cracks to your mesh. This is the model that I'm currently working on. I'm using Blender 2.91, but you can use Blender 2.8 as well. I posted an image of this with a different matcap to the community blog of my channel and some of you guys wanted to see a tutorial, so here we go. Let's get started with the settings. I use a matcap as a sculpting helper and I also like to enable the cavity so that I can see the cracks better. You see the difference. And play around with the ridge and the valley. I don't like it to be too strong, just like that. Sometimes I'm also using the red matcap. That's also nice, but yeah, depends. This time I'm using the gray one. Okay, let's have a look at the objects, the meshes. I start with a very low poly mesh. Just to have the very basic shape. I switch to edit mode. You can see not many faces are used. And this is the mesh that I keep for later baking the details onto it. So I make a copy of it. Just select it and press Shift and D to duplicate. Be sure to be in object mode for this. And now I will go ahead and turn this duplicated low poly mesh into my high poly mesh. So I'm hiding all the other objects. And then go to sculpt mode. Okay, the first thing I do is to remesh to increase the density of the mesh. You can set the voxel size here. We don't need the fixed pole setting, but we enable to preserve the volume. We want the shape, the form to be as is after remeshing. But what you can do as well is to press Shift and R, and then you see the voxel size. And when you move the mouse then, or the pen of your tablet, you can change, you can decrease or increase the voxel size. And that's a bit more intuitive than setting a number because, yeah, you see it. Okay, then you can press Remesh or use the shortcut Ctrl and R. Alright, now it is remeshed. You see this in edit mode. It is quite dense. At least it's a good density for starting the sculpting process. We have some shading artifacts after remeshing, but that's alright. You can use the smooth brush and kind of smooth them away. Or you can do this later on when adding more details. I like to use the quick favorite for the brushes. When you press the Q key, you can see it. At the moment, I don't have many brushes added. So let's add the brushes that we need for hard surface sculpting. Or at least the ones that I use. I like to use the scrape brush, then the draw sharp brush, which is a bit like the Damien standard brush in ZBrush and that I'm using for adding smaller cracks or painting forms onto the mesh. And I also add the clay strips brush that I use for larger cracks and damages. And also the pinch brush is useful. And with the settings, let's get started. Okay, the first task is a bit boring, but also kind of relaxing. I use the scrape brush to make the edges look more stylized and crisp. For the first iteration, I don't use a tablet, I just go over the edges by using the mouse. Just move over the edges with the left mouse button pressed and try to add some variations. Accuracy is not that important. Try to keep the size stable of the different edges, but also this doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, once I'm done with this kind of first iteration, I switch to my tablet. I'm using an XP Pen tablet, which is quite affordable. A link is added to the description. You don't have to spend too much money for a tablet. I tried about, I would say, 8 or 9 different tablets. At the moment, I'm quite happy with it. I speed this up now a bit because it's all the same. Just go over the edges with the scrape brush and add some variations. You have to practice this just to see what looks good and what doesn't. It's really just a matter of practice. 
I know it sounds hard, but I recommend to do this every single day, at least one hour, perhaps less. But don't do it like that, 10 hours sculpting and then two weeks nothing, it just won't work. Okay, that's good enough for getting started. I don't want to overdo this for this tutorial, but I hope you get the idea. And what I do now is I kind of paint in the stone shapes to the lower part of the mesh. And for this process, I use the draw sharp brush. And now just kind of indicate using the draw sharp brush where the stones will be. This step is really like painting. Paint the stone shape onto the mesh. Paint all sides and also at the bottom. Again, this doesn't have to be accurate. Just paint the shape, the outer sides of the stones. Now when you want to add more details, you could decrease the voxel size and do a remesh. And with this we can add finer details to the mesh. I'm increasing the depth a bit, cutting more into the mesh. And you see the basic forms are visible already and now it depends how much damage you want to add to your mesh. To make it look more stylized and to enhance the edges, you can use the scrape brush, but before I do this, I will add more cracks and damages by using the clay strips. And be sure to set it to subtract, so that we carve into the mesh. I start with the full strength, because I want to add larger and deeper damages, but you can play with this setting, depending on the amount of damage you like to add. I see we have a bug here in this version of Blender, it's experimental, version 2.91. When I change a setting of a brush, I get a small flickering in the viewport, but as I said, it's an experimental version. You see I'm adding more and more of these deeper damages. Also some cracks here, at this part. And then I add some more damages to the outsides, but use a lower strength of the brush. After I'm happy with that, I use the scrape brush again and make some cracks look a bit more stylized. Just here and there add a stylized edge using the scrape brush. If you have the feeling that a crack is too wide, you can use the pinch brush to pinch the parts more together. With this you can also create really interesting and stylized effects. And another brush that I'm using often is the grab brush, you can press G to activate it. And with this you can add a more natural and kind of randomized look and feel to your stones. You have to be careful to not overdo it, but the effect is great.
Okay, and by using these techniques, you can turn your mesh into something like that. It is still not finished, it is work in process. But in the next tutorial, I will show you how to bake the details that we added to the high poly mesh to the low poly mesh in Blender. So guys, I hope it was understandable for you and you liked the tutorial. If you do, then let me know and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Perhaps you'd like to support me by being my patron, this would be great. Follow me on my Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. Also hit that notification bell and I see you on JNM.